All right, good morning. So we are about to get started on KV Core part three today. I'm super excited to um, show you guys some awesome lead generation tools that the system has to offer. Um, quick note, my name is um, Carrie. I'm from La Rosa Realty, Fort Lauderdale. Um, I am originally from New England, so I tend to speak fairly quickly. So if you are lost or if you're not quite sure how I got to one screen, or if you need me to stop and review something, just go ahead and unmute yourselves and um, let me know and we can stop the class and kind of pick up you know how we got to where we are going okay so um if you've been to part one and part two we're we're familiar with the dashboard here on the left hand side um we're going to jump right into this part here and if if this is collapsed there's three little dots that you could click to open this up so you can read this um, but we're going right down here to lead engine. So right where my mouse is circling on the left hand side, we're going to click on lead engine and we're going to go to all lead engine tools. So these are some different tools that you can use to generate leads and uh, a couple of these you can pay a little extra to do. Um, and we're going to show you how to do that that as well today, um, but we're going to jump right in first to these squeeze pages. So right here where it says squeeze squeeze pages. I'm gonna go ahead and choose my domain and I'm gonna click start building. So what is a squeeze page? So a squeeze page is basically a list of properties that meet a certain criteria. And we're advertising this list of properties on our Facebook page because we're trying to get people who might be interested in this list to click on it, open it up, it's going to send them directly to our website and we're going to be able to capture that lead. So again, a squeeze page is a list of properties that meet a specific criteria. So when you click on squeeze page, um, right up here, there's different choices. So you can do a multi property squeeze page or you can click here and do a single property squeeze page. You can do a seller squeeze or you can do a market report. So we're gonna start here with the multi property. Now, because we are doing a multi property list and we're not singling out an existing single listing, we're allowed to include in this list listings from all brokerages, Keller Williams, Century 21, Kai's, EXP, because we're sending a list out. It's the same thing when you go into your MLS and you look for three bedroom, two bath homes with a pool in Weston and you send that list to your customer. We're able to send this list out onto our Facebook because it's a list and it's not just one property. If you're going to do a single property squeeze page, it has to be a La Rosa listing only. So that's the difference between multi property and single property. Okay, so let's stay on multi property and we're going to create a list. Now the whole idea is to put this on Facebook. And so the whole idea is to have something that sounds enticing. So in other words, you don't want to make a list of properties and say, hey, check out these homes that are overpriced and have super high HOA fees. Like nobody wants that. So you have to create a list that sounds enticing. Like check out these waterfront homes that are under $600,000 or check out these pool homes that have no HOA or check out these golf course properties, calling all golfers. If you love golf, check out these homes that are on golf courses. So you're trying to come up with a, a catchy list and you can make several, several of these lists and you should be doing it several of these a week and switching up the criteria. Because everybody following you on Facebook, not everybody wants a golf property, not everybody wants a waterfront, not everybody is, some people are looking for an HOA. So you have to appeal to many different groups of people. Okay, so let's start building our list. So the first thing is, is you have to have in mind what you're going to promote. So the first list I'm going to do is waterfront properties in Fort Lauderdale. Um, I'll do condos that are under 500,000. So in my mind, I'm like, hey, check out these waterfront properties that are right on the water that are under 500,000. So first I have to pick my location. 
So I'm going to type in Fort Lauderdale and I'm going to wait for it to auto populate. So you see it auto populated and a, a list dropped below. So I can choose, um, I can choose the city of Fort Lauderdale, which would be all of Fort Lauderdale, or I could choose a very specific targeted area. You don't want to choose a targeted area because the amount of properties that pop up are going to be less. So you want to make sure that you choose the one that says city Fort Lauderdale. Once you click on it, it will drop down here. You could also draw on a map just like you do on the MLS. I, I choose to always choose a city because again, when I'm putting it on Facebook, I can kind of talk about that. Then we're going to talk about listing types. So remember I said um, that I was going to be looking at condos on the waterfront. Okay, so I'm going to choose condos. Um, style of homes, I don't choose anything here. It gets too specific, whether it's, you know, Spanish style or whatever. I just use that blank. And then we're going to talk about a price range. So remember, in this idea that I have, I want to market condos that are less than 500000 So I don't care about the minimum price, but I'm going to put a maximum price here of 500000 Square feet, again, I don't want to talk about that. Um, and maybe one squeeze page you could do, hey, are you, you know, are you looking to, um, are you looking to, you know, have a large property, check out these homes in Broward County that have more than 4,000 square feet. So that could be a squeeze page, but that's not going to appeal to the mass amount of people. So for me, I don't use squeeze pages. Same thing with acres. You could do something like check out these homes that are on five acres or more. Um, not much is going to pop up here in South Florida, but and you can also choose beds and baths. So if a different squeeze page you wanted to say, check out these three bedroom homes that you know have X, Y, Z. But in, in this case, I'm only choosing waterfront um, condos in Fort Lauderdale. Walkable score, if you don't know what walkable means, it means, um, so if you live in the city and you don't need a car, it's extremely walkable or walkable walker's paradise. Um, again, I'm just gonna leave that blank because I don't wanna talk about that, but I do want to get into options. So as soon as I click in this box, it's going to give me some options like just listed, walkable, fixer up, new build, open house, green energy, horse property, golf course, pool, waterfront. So that's what I'm going to choose waterfront. So again, I'm building a list. So let's review. I'm building a list. I'm building a multi-property list of the city of Fort Lauderdale, condos that are less than 500,000, any bed, any bath, um, that's waterfront. I'm gonna come over here to the right-hand side of the page. I'm making this for Facebook. Hashtag. So this is really important because when you're doing a lot of squeeze pages, you wanna assign a hashtag to it. Nobody's gonna see it but you, but it's gonna keep track of who's clicking on what. So if I made eight squeeze pages this week, right? I did horse properties, I did golf course properties, I did waterfront condos, and then I did single family homes with no HOA under you know, 500,000. And I'm constantly getting leads that are clicking on the squeeze page with the single family homes, no HOA, single family homes, no HOA, and nobody's clicking on the golf property one. I'm gonna keep doing squeeze pages that target that single family home, no HOA, because I know that that's what the market is needing right now. And that's where the leads are coming from. So you're gonna create a, you're gonna create a hashtag here that kind of makes sense to the squeeze page you're making. So I'm gonna do waterfront condo, and I'm gonna put 500 into me. That means that I'm advertising waterfront condos under 500,000. I might even put FTL for Fort Lauderdale. I know what this means. I'm going to keep track of this on the side. That way, when people start coming into my KV core and I'm getting new leads and they have that hashtag attached, I know that this is an awesome squeeze page to use. So once you type in your squeeze page, you're going to have to click on it and make it stick. So you see all of these things are located underneath. That's how you know um, it's done. And then there's going to be a, a Facebook cover photo for this list. And we get to choose um, where the photo comes from. I don't care what you guys choose. Just make sure of this list, you use something from your agency. 
don't use photos from specific listing because then we get into a, a, a problem where we're advertising somebody else's picture. So for instance, say Joe Schmo works for 123 Realty and his and I choose use photo from specific listing and one of his listings, he works for 123 Real Estate and um, his picture is the one that pops up. If for some reason he follows me and he sees that I'm advertising his photo as my cover photo, I can get in trouble. So you always want to choose something from your agency. In this case, I'm going to use high price listings from my agency because I want the picture to be superb. Now, if I'm doing a squeeze page, check out these fixer uppers, I'm probably going to use a low priced listing photo from our agency. Okay, the final piece is property views allowed before registration. So let me walk you through what it's like for a user that's going to click on this link of my in, in my Facebook. So when they see the, the picture and they see the tagline that says, check out these waterfront properties in Fort Lauderdale for less than 500,000, they're going to click on the link. It's going to bring them to my website and it's going to show them all of the different properties that they can choose to click on. Um, and I'll show you in a minute, we're going to be able to see how many, um, how many properties are in the search. Maybe there's five, maybe there's 250, right? It depends on your criteria. But they're going to start clicking on the pictures, okay? Eventually, a lead box is going to pop up. It's called a call to action a box is gonna pop up and it's gonna say, if you wanna continue looking at these pictures, you have to register. What's your name, what's your email, what's your phone number? Now, for those of you, we've all had this happen to us. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of reason with you a little bit why I choose more than two defaults. Um, and I use the same example. So some, I see some of my agents are on this call and um, you've heard the story a thousand times, but I am like a recipe crazy lady on the internet. So I'm always like, especially holidays, I'm looking for recipes and I'm typing in like recipe for, you know, Dutch chocolate cake and, and a recipe will come up and I'll click on it and it'll be like that box pops up register. And I'm like, you know what? No, forget it. I'm just going to, I want, I want the recipe. I don't want to have to register. And I'm jumping off of that website. I'm going to another one and I'm looking at it. Now, if I click on the same recipe for a Dutch chocolate cake and I'm starting reading about it and I'm scrolling through and I'm, I'm getting the, um, you know, the temperature for the stove and what kind of pan to use. And then I'm starting to see the ingredient list and I'm fully embedded now, like getting into this recipe. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. And then the box pops up. I'm probably going to be more likely to register because I'm already invested into this recipe and I don't want to have to start all over from scratch. I've already got most of it written down. So think in this terms, it's the same thing when people are clicking on your link. If they're looking at these photos and oh my gosh, this website's fantastic. Oh my gosh, look at this one. And I, I like this one, I, I like this one. And then all of a sudden a box pops up and they're like to, to get further in it, register. Most likely someone is gonna register, right? But if that box pops up right in the beginning, they're gonna be like, forget about this. I don't wanna be on this website. So KV Core recommends two clicks before that box pops up. Guys, I recommend five or even 10. I want people to be super invested in my real, in my website. I want them clicking around. I want them to be already like wanting to reach out to me to look at these properties. Um, so this is my personal opinion that you should choose five or 10 before that registration box pops up. But you guys get to play around with it and I highly recommend that you do. Um, play around with the with these settings. Do a couple squeeze pages where you keep two or even one or instant, you know, and then do a couple where it's 10 or 50 and see kind of what um, how, what lead generation you're getting from it. But again, I'm going to for this one, I'm going to keep 10. OK, so we've basically told the system exactly everything that we want in our list of properties. So I'm gonna pause here and ask, are there any questions on anything that we've done here before we go ahead and generate the link? If you do, you can unmute. Okay, you guys are either following along completely lost and don't wanna ask or you have fallen asleep. Okay, so now we're gonna generate the link. You just click the green box and it's gonna generate two links. So people all the time ask me, what is the difference between the direct link and the short link? The direct link is a longer link, but you see 
it has my branding inside, Realty. If I were to create a link and put it on a postcard or a flyer, I would use this longer link because it's reinstating my branding and my website. But if you're gonna use these links digitally to pull up a specific um, list that you're making, I'm really just gonna use the short link because once it populates, I'm gonna delete it anyway and they're not gonna see it. They're not gonna see it. So basically the rule of thumb is if you're doing something in print, because by the way, you guys, these links are live. What does that mean? It means if I create a link today and 10 properties meet this criteria, and then next week somebody clicks on my Facebook and 10 more properties have hit the market, it's gonna change and show them all 20. It's a live link, it's a breathing entity, it changes. Um, so if you know how to use your clipboard, basically you just copy here, you click there and that means it's copied to your clipboard so now you can paste it. So now that I have the link, um, I'm going to do this. So before I put it on my Facebook page, I want to make sure that there's properties that meet this criteria, because the last thing I want to do is go on Facebook and say, hey, check out these waterfront properties for under 500,000 in Fort Lauderdale, and they click on the link and it says zero results. So I'm going to go to an open window. I'm going to paste the link in an open window. And I'm going to see if any property searches pop up. So now it's it's sending me to my website. So this is my website, um, but I'm checking it out in an open um, in an open link. And as you can see, guys, there's plenty of properties. Um, now, if I wanted to get specific, I could have drawn on a map and just done the beach. And maybe then I say, hey, check out these beachfront properties. But what I said was waterfront. So waterfront could be a man-made lake or anything like that. So I'm gonna keep it here. Um, but you always wanna check it in, a, in an empty window just to make sure that there's, um, that there's listings that are gonna show up. Okay, so now that I know the link works, I'm gonna to go to my Facebook page. to go to Google because I don't know my login. Hopefully we're gonna okay. So um now a little bit about Facebook. Um you are supposed to, according to Facebook, post these links on your business page. Um, I do them on my personal page, but you must know that you could be thrown in Facebook jail if you're promoting your business on your personal page. But I know some of you guys, when you just get started, um, you don't have a lot of followers on your business page yet. You can put it on your business page and then share it on your personal page. Um, it's, it's totally up to you guys. For this one, I am going to put it on my personal page. So basically, I'm, I copied it on my clipboard. I'm going to click here and I'm going to paste the link and I'm going to wait for it to auto populate. So it could take a couple seconds. And then you'll know what auto populates because it'll it'll throw up the photo. Perfect. Love this photo. OK, now that this has auto populated, you can actually come up here and delete the link. Now, guys, this is just as important. You have to make it uh, enticing. You want people to click. So I'm gonna go over something with you. Um, you might see a lot of people that use emojis. That's not because people are trying to be cute. It's because it's part of a four-step process that you should all remember every single time that you're posting, okay? So, um, and this, this goes for anything. So guys, everyone's like this on Facebook. They're scrolling, they're scrolling, they're scrolling. So the first thing that we need to do is interrupt that pattern. So if anyone even follows Tony Robbins, he talks about this a lot, like interrupting a pattern, making a noise, making a splash, or putting something out there that's gonna stop and interrupt the, the, the mindless scrolling that people have. 
So what I usually do is I'll use an emoji to do that. So I'm interrupting them, okay? So I'm gonna put three little fireballs, whatever those are. The next thing you need to do is engage with them, okay? You need to engage with that person. Now, somebody might see this and see these little three uh, fireballs and they might, they might stop the scrolling for a minute because it catches their eye, but then immediately I'm talking about real estate and if they're not interested in real estate, well, they're gonna keep scrolling but I want to engage with the people that are interested in real estate. So I'm simply gonna say, check out these waterfront condos in Fort Lauderdale. And then I'm gonna put under 500K. So I'm engaging them. The next step is educate them. And then the final step is offer. So you wanna interrupt, engage, educate, and offer. So let's talk about how I'm doing this with this. Um, number one, fireballs are gonna disrupt the pattern. Number two, I'm engaging with them. Check out these waterfront condos in Fort Lauderdale. So anybody that's interested in real estate or waterfront condos or Fort Lauderdale, they, they might wanna stop. Then I'm educating them. There are properties for under 500,000 that you can get that are on the water. Maybe someone thought there's only million dollar properties. And finally, I'm offering them something. I'm offering them a list. So I'm gonna say, click below to see the free list. And then I'm gonna use my emojis again. I'm gonna put the little down one. Maybe I'll put some money. And again, we're, we're not doing this to be cute, but it's it's kind of um, engaging them and in, in interrupting their thought. And then you guys, you know, you can um, you can play around like whatever you think looks good, uh, you know, make make this look good. But this tagline is super important because it's what's going to make people click. If you don't put anything, and they're just going to see this condos in Fort Lauderdale. They're like, oh, yeah, probably million dollar condos. Um, they're not going to click. So you need to educate them. Um, and then basically you're just going to go ahead and post. And now for any of you that follow me on Facebook, you can go ahead and see, um, this is what the post looks like. And if you wanna click on the link, it will take you to my Facebook page, or sorry, my website. And you'll see, um, it'll be the search that we did before. Any questions on this multi-property squeeze page? Yes. Hi, Carrie. I have a question. Yeah. So um, you say something about uh, your personal Facebook. You cannot promote your business. Yeah, so Facebook has a rule that they want all of your business posting to be on your business page. Now, people violate this all day long. I do it too. I've never been put in Facebook jail, but I have to tell you that if you're doing it a lot, there is the chance that Facebook will put you in Facebook jail, which I mean, I don't even know what that means. I think they ban you from posting for a little bit. So be careful. Now, you could put it on your business page and then when it comes up in your feed, share it to your personal that is allowed with facebook or maybe you want to just put it on a couple of these on your personal page um okay. i do it all the time like i said i'm just letting you know the repercussions of what could possibly happen okay thank you i never knew that and because i'm a new agent and i have a different business too but i share all the time in my facebook so i didn't yeah. know that and I do too. Um, and I've never been put in Facebook jail. Now watch me get put in jail tonight because of this post. But I mean, it's, it's rare, you know, but if you're doing a lot of these posts and guys, I can't stress this enough. This is free lead generation. And if, and, and don't get hung up on, on the, well, nobody clicked on my post. They're seeing it. People that are following you are seeing it. And, and I'm going to ask you this, how many of your friends do you see, or people that you follow on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and you see they're posting a lot, do you like it every single time or click on the links? No, but you're going to remember them when you need a haircut, a plumber, a decorator, a home cleaner, because you're, co they're constantly posting. So don't get hung up on the, on the, um, the results. 
keep posting, keep posting. You are going to get people that are clicking on these links. You are going to get people that reach out to you, but even more people are seeing, man, she's got like, okay, she's the realtor. She's the realtor. She's got properties in Fort Lauderdale. She's got horse property. She's got fixer uppers. She's the go-to person. If you want waterfront condos, like you have to keep you have to keep sight of that. It's you're, you're putting that brand recognition and remember, um, the images impressions, you have to do something like 17 times before somebody registers that that's what you do. Um, so keep doing these and don't get attached to the result. Like, well, I did a bunch of squeeze pages one week and nobody clicked on it. They saw it. I can promise you that they saw it and they see that you're working all different kinds of markets and get creative. Um, check out these homes that have open houses this weekend. Go into that option bar. So like here on KV Core, when you get into the options here, look at the list here and come up with ideas. Check out these pool homes. Um, check out these 55 plus communities. Check out open houses uh, this week. Who wants to go? I'm coming with you. New builds, fixer uppers. You know, look at these lists and, and it'll spark to give you ideas of multi-properties. Check out these short sales. Um, check out these homes with no HOAs, check out these homes that have a fireplace. I mean, that's not something we're going to do in South Florida, but just, so look at these and, and create a whole bunch of squeeze pages. And when I was selling, um, before I was in management, um, I would literally make a calendar, a paper calendar, and I would put Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I would put 10 AM and 6 PM. And then I would say, and I would write out before I make my squeeze pages, I would write out everything that I want to do. So like, okay, Monday morning, I'm doing waterfronts. Monday night, I'm doing golf properties. Tuesday morning, I'm doing no HOAs. Tuesday night, I'm doing 55 plus communities. Wednesday morning, I'm doing this. And I was doing it morning and night. And if we can't get into this in the, this class, because it's too short, but you can schedule these posts through Facebook. So when you're in Facebook, you can go into your ad manager and create a draft and then schedule it. So I would literally sit there on Saturday or Sunday or Monday, and I would schedule all of them out for the week. It would take me about an hour, but then I'm in the group and I'm like, okay, that dot click. And then I would hashtag every single one differently. I would keep a separate list of the hashtags and then they were done for the week. And then you can move on to other things. Um, any other questions before I go on to the next? Okay, so for yeah, one more, sorry. So you yeah. suggest for we put morning and evening squeeze pages every week. Every as much as I I used to do it five days a week. I would do morning and night, morning and night, morning and night. And you put it on your um professional or in your business account. Yeah, a lot of them I put on my personal page because when I was new, I didn't have a lot of followers on my business page. Yeah. And I knew there was a chance that I would go into Facebook jail, but I was like, I'll I was, well, I was a risk taker. So I, I did it on my personal. Um, and you can do it on both of your pages too, you know? Yeah. Carrie, I got lost in the, um, uh, pay in the place where you put the, um, the link, where okay. you, you raise the link and now the link appears in the bottom. That's because you start from your Facebook or? Yeah, so um, the, the, the long link directly to you. Yeah, you can post either link. I just posted the short one, but let me make let me make a brand new squeeze page um, and, and I'll do it again. I'm going to go really fast okay. on this one. Okay, great. But Thank let's you. Do this. So now let's do um, Broward County. So you can do counties too, but you have to wait until it populates. Now I'm going to choose Broward County. Um, for listing types, I'm going to do single family homes. Um, price, I'm going to go 400,000, like up to, because I am going to choose, um, I'm going to take off waterfront. I'm going to choose no HOA. Okay. So my, my saying on Facebook is going to say, check out these single family homes in Broward County for under $400,000 that have no HOA fees. Amazing, right? Um, I'm gonna take off this hashtag here. I'm gonna name it um, single, no HOA Broward, 400. And, and I know what this means, uh, single. 
Yeah. So to me, single, no HOA, Broward 400. I know what that means to me. It means single family homes. Again, nobody sees this hashtag, but me, I'm going to keep the same um, high price listings from your agency. I'm going to do 10 views again. And so now I'm going to click generate link. It's going to generate a different link. So now let's do this. I'm going to copy the long link just to show you. So you can copy either one. I'm going to copy the long link. I'm going to go back to my Facebook. And now I'm going to paste that long link, or it could have been the short link. It doesn't matter because as soon as it generates, I'm deleting that whole link because right now I don't need that link there anymore. It's just generating the photo. Okay. Um, okay. I guess this is okay. The photo. So now that it generated, I'm going to go ahead and delete the link. And now I'm going to do again, I'm going to do my little interruption. This time I'm going to do the little fire sign. I'm going to say, check out these single family homes with no HOA. I'm going to put the little, oh my God face. Come on emoji. Sorry, my computer, oh, there we go. In Broward County for under 400K. Oops. So again, the list I made was check out these single family homes with no HOA in Broward County for under 400,000. Again, I'm gonna put the little uh, finger thing down. I'm gonna say, click the link below. Get creative, guys. I'm like, I'm, I'm, this is like the least creative part of like what I do because I'm, I'm just doing it fast here. Um, but, you know, play around with this. And then I'm going to go ahead and post it. Oh, you know what I didn't do first? I didn't check it in the open window. So before I hit post, let me check this link in an open window. Uh, because remember, we want to make sure that there are actually properties in Broward County for under 400000 Again, it's bringing me to my website. There should be um, some, unless something drastically has changed and there are, okay, good. So you always wanna check it in an open window because the last thing you wanna do is, you know, someone's like, oh yeah, I can't wait to see zero results. Like what kind of realtor is this? All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and post it. So does that answer your question about the, the copying of the link? I'm referring to the link that comes after after you post that link to have your name on it this one right here the, the this one the one in the top that say your last name no no where you was but say your last name great uh that's my know? website yes but that copy directly or you have to do something before that, that is copy that that copies directly from here Okay, great. That was as my question. As soon as you copy this, the system knows to send them to your website through the link. That's great. Thank That's you. That's back coding. Yeah. So they're going to do that. I don't know why it's not popping up that post that I just did. So let me just refresh for a minute. There it is. Check out these single family homes with no HOA. And then I did the other one, which is already lost. But um, okay, perfect. So I'm going to move on. So again, we don't ever want to do a single property unless it's, unless it's our listing. And there's other ways that you can generate that. So we're going to jump in right here to seller squeeze. So seller squeeze. So uh, I get this a lot with the agents in our office. I want to be a listing agent. How do I get listings? Well, don't advertise properties for sale to buyers if you want to work with listings. You want to advertise to sellers. And you've got to put your thinking cap on and think about what are sellers looking for? Where do sellers go? Where are sellers hanging out? How can I get in front of sellers? What, what offering can I give to sellers? And it's all about they're dying to know how much their house is worth. So these seller squeeze pages are super easy. Um, you're just going to do Facebook. I'm going to do um, seller squeeze. I'm going to do, let's pick, um, Let's pick, what city do I want to pick? 
pick Coral Springs. So this is my hashtag. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna say, hey, this is the average price in Coral Springs. Are you dying to know what your house is worth? Click below and I'm gonna send you a report. So this one I'm calling Seller Squeeze Coral Springs. That's my hashtag again, only I'm seeing it. Here I'm typing in the city, Coral Springs. And again, I'm waiting for it to populate. And then I'm gonna choose city. And then I'm generating the link. So these are really easy because once I show you it, what it looks like on Facebook, it'll make more sense. Um, basically, I'm trying to put a little, you know, blurb out about properties in Coral Springs. What is yours worth? So once you generate the link again, you can copy either one of these. I just copy the short code. I go back to my Facebook. I go back to a post. I paste the link. I wait for it to populate. Once it populates, you can take the link away. Now these, you don't get to choose a photo. It's always just gonna be this backed out uh, house with the question mark. But it says here, the average price in Coral Springs is 459K. What's yours worth? So then up here for my little interrupt emoji, I'm gonna do, let's see if they have a question mark. Well, I will, I'll do the little money, money thing. So I'm saying, wondering what your Coral Springs home is worth? Click below for a free report. And then I'm gonna do those guys. Okay, wondering what your Coral Springs home is worth? Click below for a free report. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and post. So when they click on that link, right? So if somebody lives in Coral Springs, they're like, oh, I'm dying to know like what that average home is worth 459. They're gonna click on that and it's gonna bring them straight to my website. And then it's gonna ask them to um, fill out their address and everything. And then you're gonna get an alert with your KV core that this person is wondering how much their house is worth. Perfect, now you're gonna call them and you're gonna say, hey, I saw that you were, um, I saw that you clicked on my link and you're curious about your home value. Um, I'd love to go over the report with you. And guys, don't just say, let me email it to you. Get a face-to-face -face meeting. Every single thing that we do in real estate, the end result is to have a meeting, a meeting with them face-to-face. -face. Even if they're not ready to sell and buy, have a meeting with them. Because you're gonna get, you're gonna be able to capture that customer much better face to face. Meet them anywhere. Could be the office. Um, if it's their, a seller, let me come to your home and I'd love to go over the report from you. Walk through your house with the eyes of a buyer. Give you give you my opinion of what you know the market is is saying in regards to your home. Um, if it's a buyer, you can meet you know like I said, Panera Bread, the office, uh, wherever. Go for a walk on the beach, but get a meeting. Try to have a meeting with them. That is your ultimate goal. Any questions on um, seller squeeze pages? So again, with your little calendar that you can you can make, maybe you do buyers on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you do sellers on Tuesday, Thursday, or something like that. Mix it up. And again, people are watching you. People are watching you. They're seeing what you're doing. You're putting out valuable content. So it doesn't always have to be this, but if you're mixing this with, hey, I'm showing property day, check out this awesome garage. And like, what do you think of this shower head in the bathroom? And then you're, then you're giving DIY tips. And then you're doing all the other stuff that Circle Picks does with the articles. You're giving a lot of content and you're staying top of mind. Okay. You can also do a market report. This one is also really easy. Let's do Weston, Florida. Oops. Weston. Now, sometimes the city of Weston isn't right on top. Sometimes you have to scroll down and find it. And then sometimes it's not there at all. Wait. That's bizarre. Okay. Um, I had a space after West the end, so I backed up the cursor and then it populated. So you want to pick city of Weston. We're doing this for Facebook. My hashtag is going to be market report Weston. 
And then we're just generating the link. I'm gonna copy it onto my clipboard. I'm gonna go back to Facebook. What's on my mind is a market report in Weston. <laughs> Again, it's gonna populate. It's always gonna choose this photo, which I actually don't like because we're in South Florida and this is like my, my dream because it's in the fall, whoops. Um, okay. Now, sometimes this happens actually, I just tried to delete the link and then it deleted the post. Um, this happens sometimes. So if that's the case, just go ahead and leave the link, but then you wanna put something um, above it. So, okay. So this is called a free real estate market report in Weston. So on this one, I'm going to do maybe this guy. What is happening in And again, I have to leave the link because I'm trying to delete it and it deletes the whole post. So um, like I said, once in a great while that happens, I'm actually glad it happens so that if it happens to you, you know what to do. In that case, just leave it. Um, and again, this isn't super creative, but what is happening in the Western Florida real estate market? Click below for a free market report and then just go ahead and post. And remember guys, the whole point is to appeal to as many people that are following you as possible. So you don't only wanna do Weston or only Broward or only Waterfront. You gotta mix it up, not just doing for um, posts for buyers, but buyers and sellers. And that's what it'll look like there. And anybody who knows me really well following me on Facebook will know that I'm teaching a class today because <laughs> this is the only time I really am doing these anymore. Um, but it's funny because I taught a class, the last KV core class that I taught that we were doing this. Um, I actually had a, a guy that I know from Cape Cod reach out to me and um, he's like, yeah, I forgot you were in real estate. I'm looking to buy something in Florida. So um, they do work. And like I said, everybody's watching you guys. So do this, um, be creative, think outside the box and um, try to appeal to as many people and to as many different market types as you can. Any questions on anything I did about the market report? Uh, yes, about the photo, the photo automatically appear or we can choose our photo because I remember the multi-property we choose from our- um... Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the multi-market report is the only one that's gonna let you choose the photo. The ah, other okay. ones are, is just that, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go back to, um, we are running out of time because this class ends at 11. So um, what I'm gonna do, and this, this happens often, is that next week for part four, uh, we're gonna continue on how to do um, landing pages. And we'll talk about call capture there as well. Um, I do want to show you property boost real quickly because I, I get this a lot too from my agents and, and you guys all get these phone calls and you're going to keep getting them until you're not a realtor anymore. And they're all those companies, hey, I want to sell you leads and it's, you know, 30% op city or buy this Zillow zip code, um, pay me $2,000 a month, $800 a month, um, start, you know, getting all these leads. They can be great, but uh, online leads, again, it's it's low hanging fruit and it's it takes a lot of leads. It takes a lot of posting, a lot of money on leads to get a lot. Um, we're doing this free lead generation. You are gonna get some people clicking on these squeeze pages and these landing pages, but it's ultimately just your, your branding and your presence. But every once in a while you do like, God, I have nothing going on. I want a couple leads. My, I've done it all. I've paid for Facebook leads. I've done Op City. I've paid for pay-per-click leads, which is like a minimum of $700 a month. I find that the most amount of leads for the least amount of money and the least amount of 
con um, contract is by property boost. So I'm going to walk you through how to do this. It does cost money, but it's very minimal compared to other, other products. So you're going to click on property boost and I'm going to sign in. Um, and I've done this before. So um, recently I've done two ads. I had, you know, it'll tell you the impressions, the clicks, the shares, the form submissions. I've had 47 um, and the cost per lead is usually 255. So I boosted these two recently. I don't have any active um, completed. I've done those two. I have a couple different KB core accounts. So if I had opened up a couple other accounts that I have, you'll, you'll see some other ones. Um, but on this, and I, and I usually do this with a class. So I'm going to go ahead here and hit boost property. Now, um, you have to know the, you have to know the, um, the MLS number or the address. Let me see. What is it? 4109 carriage drive. Okay. So this is actually my listing. So you have to know the address. So in order to get like the property that you want to boost, and it has to be an agency listing, it has to be one of ours. I'll show you after this really quickly to remind you guys how to get into the listings. We went over that last time, um, but it has to be one from La Rosa, right? Um, so you have to know either the MLS number or the address. So you just simply click there and use selected listing. So now I'm going to property boost this, I'm going to boost this ad. Um, so this is what the ad is going to look like. And then you get to choose how much money you want to spend and how long you want to boost it for. So I could boost it for three days for $45. I could do one week for $60. I could do two weeks for 120, three weeks for 150, four weeks for 200, five, five weeks for 240. Okay, so you get to choose what you want. This is the most popular. This is what I love about it. And I and like I said, I've done this quite often. I usually pick 60 bucks and it boosts it for a week. So for one week, seven days, it's running this ad to people that have matching algorithms. So this is not being run to your people. This is outside organic lead people, right? And it's in Facebook and KV Core matching it with people that are looking. So if you're gonna boost a property, boost something that's in the price range that you wanna work in. Um, don't boost a $20,000 condo. Well, it doesn't even exist, but a you know, $100,000 condo, boost the $600,000 listing that's, that you've got in your office because those are the leads that you're gonna get. Um, so then you put in your credit card information, which they already have mine. Um, so I could literally just go ahead and, and boost this. And then basically, in my experience, when you boost a property for a week, you're going to get between a, about 20 leads. If you boost it for two weeks, I've, I usually get between 30 and 40 leads. Now, with anything, it, it takes a minute to build up momentum. So you're going to boost it. On day one, you're probably going to get nothing. On day two, probably nothing, maybe one lead. As the, as the ad progresses, you're going to see more and more leads coming in. In fact, when it ends, I'm getting like a lot of leads usually on that last day. Um, this, in my experience, is the best thing to do as far as paying for leads because you get to dictate you're not in a contract. And if you have an extra 60 bucks to spend, you could spend that. You could get in, let's say 20 leads. You could try working them and see what's going on and, and you know, following up, putting them on drip campaigns, blah, blah, blah. And maybe two or three weeks go by and you're like, well, that didn't really pan out. Let me boost something again. Now you're, you're controlling the amount of money that you're spending and you're able to kind of see what's happening without being in a contract. Um, so you guys, like I said, we always try to teach you ways to generate leads by not spending any money, but ultimately we sometimes have to. And I think that property boost is um, a great way to do that. Let me show you again and remind you how you can get to your listing le uh, list for agency listings. So right here on the left-hand side of KV Core, you're going to go here to listings, and then you're going to go down to company listings. This is going to pull up a list of the company listings of people in your office. And these are the listings that you're able to advertise. So then let's say I'm looking for um, a good price listing. Cause I mean, I want to attract the, 
those kinds of people. So I'm gonna look down here for 660. So I'm gonna memorize this address and in the property boost, I'm gonna type that in. And that's the, the listing that I'm gonna boost. Any questions on property boost, squeeze pages, market reports, seller squeeze? Okay. Excuse me, I have a question. Sure. Uh, so I see you pay um, for one week 60, uh, 60 for one week, but you don't need to pay extra for each lead? No. Okay. That $60 is gonna cover it. You're okay. not gonna pay for anything else and you're gonna see leads coming in. So they'll tell you at the end, and this is a great thing too, you guys, when you have a listing, you can boost the listing and you can actually put in the email address of the seller and it's gonna send the seller a report. And so you can use this to your advantage too. And by the way, if you get a listing, you should boost it because you're just gonna get more leads and you might be able to take both sides of it, right? Or it's just another opportunity for you to boost it. Um, but it's awesome because you can put in your seller's email and your seller is gonna get an updated report. Like, hey, um, this many people clicked on it, this many impressions, this many people liked it. And, it, and it's good to show the people, your seller that you're spending you know, a little bit of money on, on them and promoting and marketing their property and it's giving them a nice report. So something you can do, you don't have to, and then don't feel like you know, if you're brand new and you haven't made any money yet and you get a listing, you're like, now I have to spend more money. You don't have to do it, but it's something to think about um, as you're working through your, your career and getting more listings. Awesome. So any other questions before we end today? Yes, um, I m missed the two classes before. So okay. do you have a pre-recording? I mean, recording and somewhere we can see it. Yeah, so I put in the chat, I have a, a YouTube channel. It's called Real oh, Estate okay. Training, right. the number four success. Yes, I write. It has a little bumblebee as a picture with an LR on the chest. That's how you know that it's mine. Um, okay. Go ahead and subscribe to that channel. And there's a ton of recordings in English and Spanish on that. Um, all about KV Core. Some of them are longer because I used to do like this whole KV Core boot camp and it was like three hours long, but we found that people were just, it's a lot of information to absorb. Um, so now we chunk it down right now for, for corporate. Um, so some of the recordings on that YouTube channel are longer, but it's, it covers the same material. So definitely check those out. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. This was very educational. I was very lost of the KV Core. Now I have a, some kind of idea. <laughs> So with KV Core, you guys, it's one of the systems that you, you're just going to have to put in the time and, you know, take it slow, take it and, and go to the classes again. I mean, there's a couple of you on here that you've been through this again, but you, you learn a little bit more every time you go and, um, and use it because it's a, it's a great tool that we have. And if we're not utilizing it, then it's, it's not going to work for us, but just take your time, keep coming to classes, ask questions like, Whatever KV Core class you go to, whoever the instructor is, it's okay to have us back up. I mean, sometimes we forget and we just start rambling on and on and get ahead of ourselves. So just, you know, watch the recordings. And um, it's, a, like I said, we're really lucky to have this tool um, for La Rosa. So, and I'd love to see you guys in my next class. I think I'm teaching again next Tuesday. Um, and then we start the whole series over <laughs> again. I'll have to add another one in because we, um, I want to, do a couple more things. So I'll probably need two more. Um, and then we'll go back to the, you know, the beginning in October and, and start the series again. So, all right. Stop recording.